about my behavior back there. How can I ask you to forgive me? Hush now. You need to rest. I am frightened, Rogue. Listen, sugar. That wasn't you out there. Don't forget. Sauron messed with my head, too. Thank you for your understanding. All these years of caution and denial to finally unleash my true feelings. I liked letting go. Never before have I felt so free. Welcome to another episode of Gospel X, the Gospel According to the X-Men. My name is Jonathan and this is Henry. And we're just so glad that you can join us today as we explore another episode of the uh, old X-Men 1990s animated series. And this one is um, entitled Savage Land, Savage Hearts, and it's a two-part episode. And you just saw a scene that we just took from the, those two episodes. And so let's begin discussing it. So I guess, Henry, is that our contender for today that we are going to examine is Storm. Storm. So the episode is called Savage Land, Savage Heart, and it's going to steer us to where we want to go because in this episode, uh, we get a little bit more uh, information, a little bit more character building of who, what kind of person Storm is. If I could bring you guys back to our previous uh, episodes in season one, we remember Storm is uh has has many weaknesses as a, as a person who actually feels uh inferior and actually has a lot of doubts in her leadership of capabilities and her abilities mm -hmm. see in the episode with the with the morlocks that she's got really bad claustrophobia mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. costs um her performance with her team mm -hmm. she also doesn't think that she's a very good leader has a lot of self-doubt. And here in this episode, uh, at the very beginning of episode eight, we hear that she can, she constrains herself. She bottles up her emotions because uh, if she let them lets them loose, then it would be um, it would be bad. So mm -hmm. at that point, we don't know what ha would happen. It would just be bad. Mm -hmm. Later on in the episode. Um, after Sauron hypnotizes her and she becomes uh, unbridled, you would say, let's lose all the emotions. She basically uh, rampages um, throughout the savage land, just destroying things indiscriminately, not caring about her former teammates, basically just letting her power run rampant and run loose. And it is here that we can kind of see the the struggle that she's dealing with. Because on the one hand, she's got a lot of weaknesses, she's got a lot of flaws and insecurity. On the other hand, if she lets all of the, her, her control go and uses her emotions, you see that she becomes a whole lot more powerful. She can destroy things. She can basically um, do things that she, in her enraged state that she couldn't do in her contained state. So why does she contain herself? Why does she struggle with those weaknesses, with her self-doubts, with her doubting her ability when she had all this power inside her that she can unlock relatively easily? Mm -hmm. That's the question, Jonathan. What do you think? Yeah, what's interesting is that um, <clears throat> when she went on the uh, rampage of unleashing yeah. all her power, she was literally untouchable. Right? No one can get close to her, uh, no one can talk to her, no one can, basically no one can even just get any uh, touch with her, touch her or in the vicinity to help her, right? And she was definitely not helpful at all. <laughs> for well, she could single-handedly wipe out her yeah, team. Yeah, which is interesting because as she, like uh, with unbridled power, she just basically could have wiped out an entire team and completely destroyed the, the mission. Who cares about the mission? Just to destroy everything, right? And so she wouldn't have been any help at all. And uh, so it's interesting, you know, that you brought up the, um, the Warlock episode because she too could have wiped out that leader of the Warlocks 
<laughs> like single, easily, like, like easily, like that. Yeah, like that, right? And uh, and she didn't because, and uh, and when she did it, the warlocks actually gained res uh, respect of her and was able to relate with her, and that uh, as equals. And so I'm wondering. So then uh, I'm wondering when this episode, when we're matching with that episode, it's interesting how uh, the reason why she quite possibly, uh, I, I, I don't really read that many X-Men comics per se. Uh, I know Dan Forrest does, but not us. <laughs> but, you know, um, I think uh, quite possibly the reason why Storm is, is uh, constraining herself and limiting herself of her powers, knowing full well that she could unleash it, knowing full well that uh, just like the, uh, the scene that we showed that she really, she felt good. She felt, she enjoyed it, right? She loved it. Right, the At feeling. the end, she said that she really liked. And then she fun. liked it, and uh, but that's dangerous. She knows that that's dangerous, right? So why is she? I think it's because uh, she she wants to be relatable. She doesn't want to see that she, uh, to have other people see her as the other, the powerful other, or un the untouchable, or the person that needs to be worshipped. That type of thing, and uh, she wants to be seen as equals right with uh with her uh with her fellow x-men and with the fellow human beings and so that uh, she could she knows that being seen as equals would actually benefit the overall cause of the x-men which is the mission right that the overall uh, mandate of the x-men is to actually to see the uh, mutants and human humanity as equals not like mcnito where mcnito thinks that yeah, mutants are the superior race, right? So she wants, her goal is uh, she has her mind set on and fixed on uh, and convicted of uh, to fulfill that goal of mutants being equal with humans and not supersede or not be superior. And which is interesting because now you, um, you will probably ask me, so what has this got to do with the gospel? <laughs> yeah, what does this have to do with the gospel? Well, I think, uh, you know, I was reading, uh, while we were preparing this, I think uh, one of the uh, passages that uh, bring up to mind was in Philippians 2, where uh, God emptied himself to become Jesus, right? And uh, as a human form, God didn't have to be in human form. He could be remain as God, right? And that's what a lot of religions tend to see God as, is the superior human, superior being, not even human, completely aloof, and away from this world right like it's like uh here's god out here and this is the world and god is like this clockmaker who created this world and just let it run right and he's untouchable or here's this god who is this sovereign god and uh, if you slip up he'll zap you to death right <laughs> or he's not doing something and i think that in the christian god this god actually was willing to relate with us community with us and actually he, he emptied himself, sort of like Storm, he emptied himself, limited his powers, limited himself to a human being so that people can relate with him and so that yeah. he, he can show love to them relevantly, you know, that he can show love to them and that the whole goal is to actually have human beings and God together in, 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 um, in his kingdom, in, his, uh, in this in this new world that uh, that both God and uh, and human beings are like this, as opposed to God and like this. And so therefore, um, in the gospel sense, in the Christian sense uh, of looking at Storm, she's actually doing exactly, <laughs> not that Storm's God, <laughs> she's like, she's doing basically what we're supposed to be doing too. Like if we were supposed to be Christ-like, I think if we ever think that we have an advantage over somebody, we shouldn't use it. We should not declare superiority over somebody else. Uh, reasons because our whole entire goal at the end of the day, the end game, is to actually see them as equals and to actually have complete fellowship, community, and love for one another as equals in God's presence. And so um, I don't know about you, but like both of us have laser eye surgery, right? Yeah. You just did. And I just did. you know what? And then let's say like a, some uh, volleyball player in our, they want to join, but he has glasses, right? 
<laughs> right? So are we going to continue to extract the, the ball at his head because we know that he's not going to get it because he has glasses on? You know, we won't take advantage of that opportunity, right? I don't know. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's a very crass example, but, you know, it's one of those things where out of it's, love... If you, if you go and you um, basically surrender control to those emotions, those negative emotions, you end up not caring about anybody but yourself. Exactly. You that what, that's what happened in the episode. Um, you become so superior to the people around you. You think you're superior and then you have this power and all of a sudden you just, uh, people become lesser in your eyes. And even if you do have some superiority, right? Let's say, let's say like, uh, like uh, there was a homeless person uh, that, that made us angry and we do have the resources to actually sue the guy and then throw him in jail. Would we? Right? You know what I mean? And so that's type of, like, that type of superiority. Or even, um, okay, today is what? August of 12, 2020. So we're still, we're still in the whole, this whole Black Lives Matter thing, right? Uh, if you recall, there was this lady at a park in Central Park in New York. And, uh, you know, when the black man, like I said, oh, you know, uh, leash up your dog. Oh, right? Yeah. Right? And oh, then cops on him. And then she, she called the cops on him and say, there's an African black man that's like, you know, like, you know, be like a violently right? It's knowing full well saying African black men, right? It's like, a, so she knows that she, her, like you said, her negative emotions came out. She utilized her superiority, her self perceived superiority on him, right? And yet, in uh, with, with Storm and for us as Christians, we shouldn't do that. Uh, in fact, we should be like Jesus and say, you know, I consider others more than yourselves right if god the god of the universe could humble himself and become a, a human being i'm pretty sure that we can humble ourselves too and he submitted himself to death too right the dude didn't need to die nor he could have just avoided death altogether but he even submitted himself to death which is even lower than us so yeah, like you said, if God can do it, so can we. And uh, I think so can Storm. And and Storm did. <laughs> but then the interesting, okay. interesting yeah. thing though, uh, before we close, Storm is also showing her human side because it is tough. And that's why she, that's her challenge as well. And like Paul says, there, everyone has a thorn in their flesh and that's a struggle. And we just continue to draw closer to Jesus as we continue to have these challenges of withholding our superiorities or our self-perceived superiorities. Anything else that you want to add? No, I think, uh, I think we're good. All right. Well, All everyone, right. thank you so much for joining us with an, another episode of Gospel X. My name is Jonathan. This is Henry. And uh, till next time, have a blessed day.